Imagine cutting your feed bill in half with something as cheap as sugar. Today, I'm testing a feed trick rancher's whisper about molasses. Some say it transforms average bulls into massive gain machines. Others say it's a total waste. So is molasses the secret weapon for fattening cattle or just sticky hype? Let's find out before you spend another dollar on feed. Let's be honest, the cost of grain and supplements can feel like a punch to the gut. Every single month, that bill comes due, and it seems to only go up. You look at your herd, you look at the numbers, and you ask yourself, is there a smarter way? Is there an edge I'm missing? That's the question that led me down the rabbit hole of molasses. The promise is incredibly alluring. It's a cheap, readily available source of pure energy. And cattle, well, they absolutely love the taste. It makes even the most unpalatable, low-quality forage taste like a treat. This increases their overall feed intake, which in theory should lead to faster weight gain. It sounds like the perfect solution, a true silver bullet for the modern rancher. But here's the trap, the critical mistake that costs inexperienced ranchers thousands of dollars and can even harm their animals. And the worst part is, almost nobody talks about it. They see the low price tag, they see the cattle licking the tub clean, and they think they've cracked the code. They pour molasses over their hay, mix it in their feed, and wait for the magic to happen. But instead of explosive growth, they get inconsistent gains, digestive problems, and a herd that just isn't performing. Why? Because they've misunderstood what molasses actually is. Molasses is pure, simple sugar. It's an incredible source of energy, but it's critically lacking in one department, protein. Specifically, crude protein. Fattening cattle, especially young bulls and steers, need a high-protein diet to build muscle mass. Pouring sugar on a low-protein diet is like putting high-octane racing fuel in a car with no engine. You have all this energy, all this potential, but no mechanism to turn it into what you actually want, which is high-quality beef. The animal's rumen, that incredible fermentation vat in their stomach, gets a massive jolt of sugar. The microbes in the rumen go crazy, they multiply rapidly, but they quickly run out of the nitrogen they need to build protein. It can lead to a condition called acidosis, where the rumen's pH drops dangerously low, causing the animal to go off feed, get sick, or even worse. Have you ever had an animal suddenly stop eating, look lethargic, and you couldn't figure out why? This could be the hidden culprit. So you're probably thinking, great, so molasses is useless then. Not so fast. This is where the secret comes in. This is the information that separates the professionals from the amateurs. Molasses isn't the key on its own. It's one half of a powerful, cost-cutting combination. The other half? A source of non-protein nitrogen, or NPN. The most common and affordable form of this is simple feed-grade urea. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Urea, isn't that fertilizer? Yes, but it's also the missing link. In a moment, I'm going to explain exactly how to combine these two cheap ingredients to create a super supplement that can outperform expensive commercial feeds. But first, you have to understand the science, and it's simpler than you think. Remember those super energized microbes in the rumen feasting on the sugar from the molasses? They are starving for nitrogen. When you introduce urea, which is about 46% nitrogen, you give them exactly what they need. These microscopic organisms take the simple nitrogen from the urea and the energy from the molasses, and they perform a miracle of biology. They synthesize their own bodies into high-quality microbial protein. The cow then digests these microbes further down its digestive tract. So you're not feeding the cow directly. You are feeding the billions of protein factories inside her rumen, and she, in turn, harvests that protein. You are essentially turning a cheap sugar and a simple nitrogen compound into the building blocks of pure muscle. This is the one-two punch that makes the system work. You provide the cheap energy, you provide the cheap nitrogen, and the cow's own biology does the heavy lifting. So how do you actually apply this on your ranch? Let's talk practical strategy for both the small-scale operator and the large feedlot. The most common method is a liquid feed supplement the rule of thumb, and please write this down, is a mixture that is roughly 10 parts molasses to one part urea by weight. This ratio is critical. Too much urea can be toxic, 
and too little won't give the microbes enough nitrogen to work with. For a small producer, you can mix this yourself in a tank and pour it over low-quality hay or straw. This act of enrichment, called amineation, not only adds energy and protein, but also breaks down the tough fibers in the forage, making it more digestible. You are effectively turning cheap throwaway roughage into a valuable feedstuff. Your cattle will eat more of it, and they'll get far more nutrition out of every single bite. For larger operations using a total mixed ration, or TMR, molasses is a game changer. It reduces the dustiness of the feed, making it more palatable, and it helps all the different ingredients bind together, so the cattle can't pick and choose. They get a perfectly balanced ration in every mouthful. You can add your liquid molasses urea mix directly into the TMR wagon. The key here is consistency. Every batch must be mixed thoroughly to ensure there are no hot spots of urea. This is non-negotiable for the health of your animals. But when you get it right, the results are staggering. You can significantly reduce the amount of expensive soybean meal or other protein sources in your ration and replace it with a far, far cheaper alternative that your cattle's own bodies will turn into perfect protein. The savings can be upwards of 20 to 30 percent on your total feed bill without sacrificing performance. In some cases, ranchers even report improved average daily gains. But before you run out and buy a truckload of molasses and urea, we need to talk about the mistakes. And believe me, they are easy to make. The first, as we discussed, is improper mixing. A pocket of concentrated urea can be lethal. Full stop. The second mistake is introducing it too quickly. The rumen microbes need time to adapt to this new diet. You must start with a low concentration and gradually increase it over a period of two to three weeks. If you shock their system, you'll do more harm than good. The third, and this is the one that silently drains your profits without you even noticing, is forgetting about minerals and vitamins. Molasses and urea provide energy and protein, but they are nutritional zeros when it comes to things like calcium, phosphorus, copper, and selenium. If your mineral program isn't rock solid, you will create a deficiency that puts a hard ceiling on your cattle's growth, no matter how much protein and energy you give them. You'll be hitting the gas pedal with the emergency brake on. Let's run some quick, back-of-the-napkin math. Let's say a ton of your standard protein supplement costs you $400. Now let's say you can create your own liquid supplement. A ton of molasses might cost you $150, and the urea needed for that ton might cost another $50. You are creating a superior supplement, customized for your forage, for $200 a ton. That's half the price. Now multiply that savings by the number of tons you use in a year. For some of you that number is in the tens of thousands of dollars. Money that goes directly back into your pocket, your family, or your operation. That's the power of understanding the system, of not just following what everyone else does, but digging deeper. So is molasses the key to cutting fattening cattle feed costs? The answer is a resounding yes, but only if you hold the right key. The key isn't the molasses itself. The key is the knowledge of how to combine it with a non-protein nitrogen source to unlock the full potential of your cattle's rumen. It's about working with nature, not against it. It's a testament to the fact that sometimes, the smartest solutions in ranching aren't the most expensive ones, but the most understood ones. This is what our community is all about. We are the ranchers who don't just follow tradition. We question it. We test it, and we perfect it. We're always looking for that edge, that smarter way to raise healthier, more profitable animals. If you believe in that philosophy, if you got even one piece of actionable advice from this video, do three things for me and for this community. First, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for Biggest Bulls and COD. We go deep on topics like this every single week. Second, drop a comment below. Have you used molasses before? What was your experience? Do you have a question about the ratios or the mixing process? Let's start a conversation, because we all learn when we share. And third, if you know another rancher who is struggling with feed costs, share this video with them. You could be saving them thousands of dollars. Here on Biggest Bulls and COD, we're not just raising cattle, we're raising the standard. Thank you for your time. Let's grow together.